This lecture is an introduction to acids and bases. We will review the chemistry of acid, bases, and buffer systems, describe the pH equation and range of pH in the body, define and apply the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation as it relates to the bicarbonate buffer system, apply acid-base chemistry to understand acid-base balance in the body, and describe the bicarbonate buffer system in detail. We've already talked about fluid and electrolyte balance. We're going to continue on the theme of the cellular environment by now talking about acid-base balance. Cells live in a fluid environment. The maintenance of cellular fluids, electrolytes, and acid-base balance is a central component to maintaining body homeostasis. This requires integration of many body systems. Integration of the renal system, endocrino-hormonal system, neural and cardiovascular systems in particular. The average person generates 50 to 100 milliequivalents per day of various acids formed as a result of metabolism. This is breakdown of carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, and loss of alkaline fluids in the stool. That is bicarbonate-rich fluid in the stool. Lungs and kidneys are the primary regulators of acid-base balance. So respiratory acids are eliminated as CO2 during ventilation. And metabolic acids are eliminated by the kidneys as protons in the urine. So let's think back to your prerequisites of chemistry from many, many years ago. An acid is any compound that generates hydrogen ion in solution. A base is any compound that accepts or binds hydrogen ion in solution. pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. The pH of blood is neutral. It ranges from about 7.35 to 7.45 and buffers in the blood and in the body help to neutralize pH. A buffer is a neutralizing compound that resists pH changes. The simplest form of a buffer is water. Water dissociates into hydrogen and hydroxide ions. If there are excess protons in a solution, those can combine with hydroxide ions to form water, and that buffers that solution. Let's look at the pH scale and just remind ourselves of some pH values. A neutral pH is 7.4, right down the middle. A low pH means that you have high acid levels, because remember, pH is the negative log of the proton concentration. So low pH is high acid. If the blood is too low in pH or too much acid, we call that an acidosis. A high pH is low acid levels, or an alkalosis. Remember this is a law of relationship, so every change in pH represents a tenfold change in the proton concentration, and that's important. Small differences in pH are large differences in the proton concentration. Pause here for a minute if it's been a while since you looked at the pH scale, and look at some of these examples of pH, both in the body and in, and in common household items. So buffers prevent pH changes. You would survive only a few minutes if your blood pH fell below 7 or above 7.8. Buffers help to minimize changes in pH by preventing free protons and free hydroxide ions from forming. Cells contain buffers that protect against pH changes. You will learn about bicarbonate, ammonium, and other buffers in the body. Remember, body fluid composition is a major factor controlled by homeostasis. This includes the level of ions and acids in the blood. Your body has pH sensors that trigger both renal and respiratory compensation if acid base is out of balance. So buffers are present to minimize fluctuations in pH. A good buffer should be in a buffer pair. That is a conjugate base and a weak acid. It should dissociate well at a neutral pH. The dissociation constant is called this pK. The value at which the level of acid and base is equal for that buffer pair is its pKa. The pK of a bicarbonate buffer system is 6.1, so it's pretty good. 
We use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to determine the relationship between pH, pK, and the acid-base levels. This is going to come up in both your pharmacology and your clinical courses, so yes, you need to know this. The pH is equal to the pK plus the log of the base over the acid concentration. Write this one down so you can apply it later. Here's some examples of common buffers in the body. The bicarbonate carbonic acid, hemoglobin, phosphate, proteins, and ammonia ammonium ion buffers. Here I've also listed the acid and base conjugate pairs so that you can see them. We're going to focus on the bicarbonate buffer system as a very common and very important example of buffers in the body. The bicarbonate buffer system resists changes in pH. In other words, the bicarbonate will soak up excess acid if acid is high. And the bicarbonate levels will then decline. So write down this reaction. Let's zoom in on it here so you can see it. So here's the bicarbonate buffer reaction. Carbon dioxide combines with water. That then quickly dissociates into a proton and bicarbonate. Remember, like any other chemical reaction, this goes in both directions. And this is the important part of the bicarbonate buffer system. Bicarbonate is present in fluids in the body so that if acid is high in those fluids, it will combine with that proton and dissociate to liberate carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide can then travel to the lungs where it can be lost through respiration. This is an important way in which we remove acids from the body. Conversely, if carbon dioxide levels are high in the blood, that will combine with water to dissociate ultimately and liberate acid. So an increase in carbon dioxide in the body essentially is an increase in acid in the body. So take a look at this reaction and think about it in both directions. Now let's look at some normal values for carbon dioxide and bicarbonate in the body. The normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide, which is similar to its concentration, but because it's a gas, we measure in partial pressure, is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. The normal bicarbonate level is 21 to 27 milliequivalents per liter. Lungs can speed up or slow down the breathing rate as respiratory compensation. If lungs increase their respiratory rate, they can eliminate more CO2. If lungs decrease their respiratory rate, they can build up CO2. Eliminating CO2 effectively eliminates acid from the body. Building up CO2 effectively builds up acid and can help to balance an alkalotic state. The kidneys can also adjust excretion and reabsorption. This we would call metabolic compensation. The kidneys can excrete more bicarbonate versus reabsorbing more bicarbonate. We'll talk about this more when we get to the renal system and I'll show you those pathways. But for now, think about bicarbonate and CO2 as ways in which the body can compensate for acid and base disorders. A respiratory comp compensation is a change in a breathing rate. A metabolic compensation is a change in the excretion or reabsorp reabsorption of bicarbonate. By now, we've gone through normal levels for electrolytes in the body, and it's time to add blood gases to those levels. If you look in the back of your textbook, you're going to find a panel of normal lab values, which comes in handy for a lot of things. Here, we're looking at the electrolytes and the blood gases, which are going to be important for looking at acid-base balance. In particular, you're going to want to pay attention to pH, carbon dioxide, and bicarbonate levels. Here's an example of a calculation. What is the expected pH for this patient? His lab values indicate that his bicarbonate is 24 milliequivalents per liter. His CO2 is 40 millimeters of mercury. 
Now remember that CO2 needs to be converted to its conjugate acid. So you can't simply use the CO2 value, you have to first convert it by multiplying it to point, multiplying it by 0 0.03. You've got your bicarbonate level, which is your base. Now you've got your conjugate acid, which is carbonic anhydrase. What's the expected pH for this patient? What equation are we going to use? Remember I told you? Write down that Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So here we're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to get the expected pH for this patient based on his bicarbonate and CO2 levels. So plug in these numbers to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. What you should get is a pH of about 7.4. What were the numbers you needed to know? You needed to know the pK which is 6.1. That you can look up, but I gave it to you a few slides ago. You also need to know the base and the acid concentration. The base is the bicarbonate level, and the acid is 0 0.03 times the carbon dioxide. Plug those numbers in, and you get a pH of 7.4. So these are normal values. I intentionally gave you something normal, so it's a little easy to do. But you can see he has normal levels, of bicarbonate, normal levels of carbon dioxide, and his expected pH would be right in that neutral range. So this image shows that there's a balance between the bicarbonate and the carbonic acid concentrations in the blood. If you're in an alkalotic state, the respiratory system can choose to retain carbon dioxide, or the renal system can choose to excrete bicarbonate. If you're in an acidotic state, the respiratory system can release carbon dioxide and the renal system can retain bicarbonate. These systems function in balance to keep the pH at a neutral level. One important piece of information is that respiratory compensation is generally much faster than renal compensation. So sometimes you will see a mixture of acid-base conditions as the systems are trying to compensate for the changes in the body. And it's often important to intervene because these systems may not be fast enough to get the patient back to normal pH before it's too late. Okay, that's the end of the introduction to acid-base. Let me know if you have any questions.